السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیس اینڈ بلیسنگس آف اللہ ٹو آل آف یو لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹ من ویلکم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم آئی سیک ریفیوج وت اللہ فرام دا شیطان دا اسٹون بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ود دا نیم آف اللہ موسٹ کریشیس موسٹ مرسیفل دا ٹاپک از واٹ القرآن سیز اباؤٹ حرب the war translated harb is the translation in english the war but before i speak what the quran has to say about those relevant ayats or those relevant verses which deal this with this topic harb the war i would like to discuss in my own words a general view of the concept prevailing in the whole world that islam has spread by the sword meaning by raging wars against the non-muslims that is the general concept in the whole world that's we have been programmed so first of all i just want to just clarify a few historical evidences that generally people know and they just don't think and ponder there was a time that the muslims did not the history available history that is provided to us that there was a time in the history that Islam or the Muslims rule India. Not telling us that how was the India was ruled by the sword or the conquerors or Muslims were, were ruling India by the sword. But we know for the fact that in India, the Muslims ruled about 800 years. And in during that course of 800 years of rule, If the Muslim or the Islam would have been putting swords to the non-Muslims, in 800 years there would have been no Hindus, no other uh, type of religion beliefs prevailing in India today. There would have been none if they would have used the sword or wars against the Hindu people, non-Muslim, Hindu means non-Muslim, in India. When partition took place, how many Muslim uh, come forward were the one-fourth? The three-fourth are still non-Muslims in India. So that means in the whole 800 years, the Muslim people are peace-loving people. That they let the people be as they are. If they want to live as Hindu, as non-Muslim, live, with, live under the rule of Muslim empire for 800 years in India. So Islam means, Salam means peace, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be unto all of you. Islam means to attain peace. So you can see for sure that India, we, that's the one proof of the history that we did not use a sword to the Hindu people. Another example you can find in Spain. In Spain, we ruled similar sort of time that is about the available history is 800, year, 800 years. And in that 800 years of rule of in Spain, today you will find that there are minority are the Muslims and the majority of the Christians. That means we did not use the sword. If we would have been waging wars and using swords that people you become Muslim, otherwise we kill you, then there would have been none a Christian today in Spain. Another example that you can see that the Muslim people are peace loving people that they ruled in Spain and you can find the majority are the Christian today and they are left in minority. Another example is in Egypt. The majority of the time Egypt has been ruled by the Muslims in the Middle East country and you will find that in Egypt there are Coptic Christians from, from so-called the advent of Islam before that. There are still Coptic Christians and they are increasing in number day by day. That means the Egypt, the, uh, the Muslim people who are in Egypt or the Muslim rulers are not putting Christian swords that if you don't become Muslim, we'll kill you. And if I, if you just going to read all the, I'm not a man of history, I just give you a few examples which are very famous, but we don't think in those terms that because they are, a propaganda has been done or been put forth in our mouth that the Islam spread 
by the sword. So I gave you three examples. You can go up, check up in the history that how the Muslims have been ruling and if we were rulers, then what was the what was our Muslim behavior with the non-Muslims? Were they were living in peace with us, or we were putting swords to people? If they don't become Muslim, we'll kill you. So the Muslims never use swords because Islam means to attain peace. So you cannot say that Islam you can attain peace until you cannot attain peace until unless we put a sword to you or war to you. If if I put a war, if I wage a war against the people, then you will have peace. So there is not a single categorical statement in the whole book Quran that the Muslims are supposed to wage wars against the non-Muslims. In war means I'm using the word war is harab, not jihad. Jihad means struggle to strive. In the way of Allah, jihad means struggle to strive in the way of Allah, and harab means war. Even it's not mentioned that you have to wage war in the way of Allah. Not a single verse. So this is a big allegation against the Muslim world and Islam, that it has spread by wars, that it has spread by wars or by by force. Before we go to the Quranic ayahs, I would like to discuss few verses of the Bible to have a comparative view and the behavior of the Jews and the Christians in in our apparent uh, available history. Again, for the available history, what the Bible says about the wars, and at the same time, what is the behavior? From the available history of the Jews and the Christian in relation to wars, this Bible in my, I hold in my hand is a Bible which contains is divided into two parts. One is the Old Testament, and the other part is the New Testament, and joined together is a Bible. The Old Testament, generally, the Old Testament is believed. And practiced by the Jews, the Old Testament. But the Christians say that we believe the Old Testament and the New Testament, both together. So this I hold in my hand in the Bible, which contains the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is believed by the Jews. The Christian believe the Old Testament and the New Testament both. As a Bible, so I will give you certain verses of the Bible from the Old Testament. When I give you the verses from the Bible, from the Old Testament, it refers to that the Jews believe the Old Testament, and the Christians also believe the Old Testament. So these are the biblical verses of the Old Testament to explain to you. That what is the concept of wars in the Jews, in the Christian and Jews' mind, because they believe in this Bible and they practice. So first of all, you open this one and two page, I suppose. The heading I have given according to the Bible in the Old Testament. This is the belief of the Jews only. I repeat again, according to the Bible in the Old Testament. The belief of the Jews and Christians both, the Jews and the Christians both believe these verses and their practice in the world. First, we have to see what is written in the Bible in the, this Old Testament. The book is the Deuteronomy. It can refer, you can say, as a chapter. Deuteronomy is a chapter or book. Twenty chapter, verse ten to thirteen. I will read first. It says regarding wars, what you have to do when you march up and attack to a city. Attack, attack. Uh, 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 sorry, when you march up to attack a city, make its people an offer of peace. Now, Jews and the Christian are asked or commanded by the rule of this law that when you want to attack any city, you first make an offer. 
that you must accept us peace you must have peace with us meaning you have to submit to our philosophies whatever the christian jew philosophy is whatever the bible says to them what are the commandments to them you first tell them that you have peace you want to have peace so further it says in 11 if they accept and open their gates all the people in it shall be subjected shall be subject to forced labor and shall work for you when the people whom the jews and the christians intends to attack if they open the gates for them that we can't fight you we lay our hands means we don't want to fight so what you do you capture them and makes them forced labor by force by force subject them to forced labor and shall work for you meaning you dictate the terms the terms of the the jewish and the christian philosophy to the people you conquer that is the way the jews and the christians are implementing these verses in the world the says in 12 if they refuse to make peace and they engage you in battle in war lay siege the, to the to that city if they refuse meaning the the opponent party muslims or non muslim muslims hindus buddhists atheists agnostics of the communist if they refuse what you do if they refuse to make peace then engage them in you in battle lay siege that siege to that city 13 verse when the lord your god delivers it into your hand put to the sword all the men in it within it what do you do put everybody to sword this is the concept of the christians and the jews that put people to sword if they do not accept to your uh, their, your philosophy as jews and christian when the lord your, then when your lord god delivers it into your hand put to sword all men in it kill them so this is how you will see the jews and the christians are spreading the religion in the whole world further in numbers 31 so now every boy kill every boy so now kill every boy and kill every woman who has who has had sexual intercourse but keep alive for yourselves all the girls and all the women who are virgins put to the sword and kill every man and kill every woman who has sexual intercourse with any other man find out they are virgins or not if they are dead then kill them this is the concept of the jews and the christian bible and they believe and practice further in leviticus for they say but keep alive for yourself all the girls and all the women who are virgins but keep whom you don't kill who are virgins for yourselves and leviticus 25 says and you may you may leave them as an inheritance to your sons those virgins as inheritance to your sons whom they must serve as long as they live make them enslave them enslave the girls the virgin girls this is the enslaving of mind psychologically enslaving and in general slaving and men who want to stand, take a stand kill them so that there are no more men to resist you further deuteronomy 20 as for the women the children the livestock and everything else in the city you may take these and plunder for yourselves and you may use the plunder the lord your god gives you from your enemies plunder means loot booty loot them who the the livestock their belongings everything loot them plunder for yourself and the lord has given you that lord has provided you this plunder the loot and the booty of the of the other people livestock everything else in the city 
you may take these as plunder loot them booty for yourself and you may use the this plunder the lord your god has given you for for your from your enemies from your enemies this becomes your loot and boot so this is the war battle or wage of war of the jews of the christians against the non christians and the non jews now for the deuteronomy 2015 this is how you are to treat all the cities that are at distance from you and do not belong to nations nearby that means you have not not nearby all the cities all over the world you have to take this kind of concept and ruling and waging all wars all over the world not only nearby cities all over the world so this is how the jews and the christian is spreading their religion all over the world by pit, putting men to swords and keeping alive, alive those virgin girls for them killing everybody however in 16 how in the cities of the nation lord your god is giving you as an inheritance do not leave alive anything that breathes do not leave anything that breathes which can be an enemy to you kill them kill that person men and women except the virgins and loot and booty so this is how the christianity the judaism is being spread all over the world and if you go to any city any country in the city of the world you will hear concepts of jewish and christians beliefs in the minds of every people of the world even so called liberal muslim world they don't even know that it is coming from the bible it they think this a culture is islamic where it, it is something to do with the bible they have enslaved our minds by and they have practiced i will give you examples but before i give you this i have to show because if you go to these verses to a christian so he said look brother this is old testament this is boastly practiced by the jews our jesus christ was a person of love peace who says the christian jesus christ because the old testament contains from adam to moses time so they say that if you talk the jews have to believe i told you this is the belief of jews and the christians both but if you are speaking to specifically to a christian he will say this is old testament don't quote, quote me old testament quote me new testament because jesus was a person of love of peace so you are quoting the verses for the old testament and this is mostly the jews are like that not us we are loving people christians so let us see what the new testament has to say next page so this is only the belief of the christian the new testament in the new testament it says according to the bible the new testament this is the christian faith first of all this is how the christians this is the whatever i am going to read is not my belief at all let me clear one point i do not believe a word what i am reading this is a belief of the jews and the christians now i am reading the new testament so i say this is the belief of the christians so in the christians because isa salam is a mighty messenger of allah in the quran so i am going to quote you verses there is a bible by the name of red letter bible and in that red letter bible there are verses in the bible are marked in red in the new testament in the new testament there are a uh, bible in the new testament there are verses marked in red they refer that these are supposed to be the word of jesus directly directly the words of jesus in first person so i will read these verses that i am going to read now is generally accepted by the christians as the words at the as the words of jesus the, he his words i as a muslim do not but i am talking about what he at because he is our mighty messenger and whatever isa salam is mentioned the quran i believe so but this is how isa salam according to the sorry bible new testament jesus christ speaks to the learned people in matthew 23 he addresses to the people you snakes and sons of snakes this is how he speaks the loving jesus christ 
the loving Jesus Christ. You snakes and sons of snakes. In Matthew 23 verse 33. In Matthew 33 verse 13. You hypocrites. You hypocrites. Jesus is addressing to his the learned Jews of his time. Then further Matthew 12 verse 39. How evil and godless are the people of this day. This is how he generally, if there are many other verses, I'm just giving because it's not a topic from the, of the Bible. This is how Jesus addresses people and e evil and addresses generation. You hypocrites, you snakes, you pigs. I'm not talking, you can check up in the Bible. You pig, you swines. This is how Jesus addressed to his people loving Jesus. Saying something in reality you need. A red letter Bible. This is how Jesus talked. And further he said, do not think. In Matthew 5, 7, do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus says, I have not come to abolish the law of the prophets, but I have come to fulfill them. So what was read in the Bible? So if you ask the Christian, what, what this verse is referring to? It is referring to the Old Testament. Whatever is in the Old Testament, he has to fulfill. What I read before. Are you following brothers and sisters? Whatever I read from the Old Testament is the law of the prophets. So he says, I do not think I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come to abolish them. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill them. And in verse 18 he says, I tell you the truth, until the heaven and the earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. What is everything accomplished? How to wage wars? I've, I've read before. I've already read before. I don't have to repeat again. Kill everybody. Kill everybody. That's, that he is going to fulfill. And not a single little dot can be excused. It has to be practiced in full. And in verse 19, anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments teaches others and do not, and uh, sorry, others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever practice and teaches this commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Meaning whatever is mentioned in the Bible to how to make war and attack a city, you have to follow in the smallest aspect of its letter. You, who is talking now? Jesus, referring to the Old Testament. The whole of the Old Testament. Because this is how Jesus, Christians believe. Old Testament, Old Testament, New Testament put together. So I am quoting the Jesus verse that he is referring to the if not a letter can be taken out. You have to word, fulfill or complete in its letter. In letter is that you kill everybody. We have read this. Now, in Luke 12 and verse 51, it says, Do you suppose that I came to bring peace to the world? No, not peace, but divisions. You suppose you think I come here for peace, loving peace? No, no. Do you suppose that I came to bring peace to the world? No, not peace, but divisions. Then Luke 12, verse 49. I came to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already kindled. My object is not to bring loving peace. This is what the Christians are trying to say. But what he says, Bible in the Bible, Jesus. What he says is, I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it was already kindled. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, I am reading the Bible. And it's the red letter Bible means his words, Jesus' words. I not believe, I do not believe. No Muslim believes this. It is the Jews, not sorry, Jews, the Christians. And it further says, now, in Luke 14, 26, Whosoever comes to me cannot be my disciple. Unless he loves me more than he loves his father and his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers and his sisters and himself as well. Meaning if you want to be my disciple. So you have to all believe what just now I said. You don't have to love your mother. You don't have to love your wife. You don't have to love anybody except me. And what I am saying you have to follow that. And what just now I read is in the Bible. I have not come here 
Do you suppose I have come here to bring peace to the world? No, not peace, but divisions. This is what you have to believe in my disciples. You have to believe that. 